Hi everyone, I'm Jillian and I'm a tutor for Bio 105 here at the ERC. I took Bio 105 when I was a freshman a few years ago, so I'm familiar with the class and I know what it's like to be in the course. Um, and I'm here to give you some advice about things that I did that helped me do well in Bio 105 and also other science courses I've taken here at BU. So the first tip I can give you right off the bat is to go to lecture. And I know that this can be difficult because it is really early, it's an 8 a.m. lecture, um, but it definitely is really important to go to lecture in order to do well in this class as well as any other class you take. Um, and not just showing up to lecture, but also trying to be present and take notes and listen and take in as much of the lecture as you can. Um, so one way you can actually make this easier for yourself is if you review the notes before lecture, like the night before, um, so you can look through it ahead of time. Um, this is really helpful because it helps you take more efficient notes once you're in lecture because it's easier to follow now that you've kind of gone over all the material once before. Um, and I know finding the time to do that can be difficult, but it's definitely something that is worth the effort. It definitely made a difference for me because like I said, I was in your position a few years ago, so I know that this course isn't easy. Um, so those are just some general tips I can give you about preparing for class. And next I'll show you some methods um, about doing well in the course. So the first method I can give you for doing well in Bio 105 is to take good notes. Um, and I know that the notes for this class are unique because they're given to you ahead of time in uh, a notebook by Professor Godrick. Um, and you might think that because they're given to you, you can just study them as they are and you'll be fine when it comes time to take the exam. Um, but in reality, if you do that, you could be missing out on some key concept or bigger picture ideas that could really help you when it comes time to study that you could get from lecture. Um, so I will next show you some ways that you can enhance your notes and add depth to them to gain a better understanding of the material. So this is an example of a diagram of the human immune response to viral infection that you'll see soon in lecture. And this is the diagram given to you as it is in your notes. Um, so if you haven't gone over the material before you go to lecture for this class, it'll be a lot harder to listen to the lecture, take notes, and on, try to understand what's going on all at the same time. So you could be in lecture and hear Professor Godrick say something about an antigen receptor over here. And while you're writing that down, she could be going over the steps happening here, and then by the time you have finished those notes, she's over here talking about antibodies. So you write that down. Um, so because you haven't looked over the material before, you're able to take less notes, and then they're a lot less useful to you when you go back and try to study for the exam. So this is an example of what my notes looked like when I took this course. And I had actually reviewed the material before going to lecture. So I was already familiar with what all these cells were in this diagram. Um, that way, when I actually went to lecture, I was able to focus more on what they actually do and how they all interact um, to kind of form the immune response. So because I already knew what um, an APC cell was, I was able to write down her explanation of how it interacts with a CD8 cell, how the CD8 cell will bump into this and recognize something foreign in its receptor. Um, another example over here talking about natural killer cells, I already knew or had a basic understanding of what they were, but she explained how they secrete this chemical and how that can have an effect on T helper cells. Um, and other cells within the immune system. And then in this section, I was able to write down how T helper cells secrete these chemicals, which then affect B cells and cause them to release antibodies into the fluids. So this is an example of even more detailed notes um, for this diagram. And how I kind of filled in this diagram was I had prepared for lecture by going over the material and then I was better able to take notes in lecture 
and then even after lecture, I went back and used the notes that she gives on the diagram and also the textbook to add in more information so that when I went back and studied it two weeks after learning it or three weeks, whenever the exam was, everything I needed to know was on this diagram. So including what each cell is, what it does, how it does it, and then the, the effect on the whole immune response of that action. So the textbook was uh, a resource I used when I took the course that really helped me gain a better understanding of the material gone over in lecture. And I know the textbook includes a lot more information than you're actually responsible for, so I would use it in conjunction with the notes. So for example, this is the chapter on um, host defenses and immune responses. So I went through the chapter and highlighted things that overlapped in Professor Godrick's notes. That way I would know what specifically to focus on within the chapter. Uh, the book also really helped me because I'm more of a visual learner, so it provides a lot of good diagrams about structure. For example, all these um, white blood cells that you'll learn about. And then they also are good for showing certain process, so certain processes. So for example, this is the major events in inflammation. So once you learn it in lecture, you can go back and find it in the book and kind of see step by step what's going on. So taking good notes and using the textbook are great things you can do throughout the semester um, while you're in the course. But when it comes time to actually studying for the exam, study groups are a great way to prepare. So um, they're really good for helping kind of discuss the material with your friends or classmates to really help reinforce what you do know and then some things that you're not as familiar with. So tips for um, using study groups is, first of all, you definitely want to prepare on your own before you go into a study group. Um, so I usually start studying at least a week in advance, and it helps me by spacing out the material night by night. That way it's a lot less stressful than trying to cram it all in all at once. Um, so definitely prepare before you go into a study group and study on your own first. Once you're in a study group, um, I would like strongly suggest verbalizing it with each other and trying to kind of go through um, processes step by step. So for example, you could try explaining that immunology diagram to each other. And another key thing about study groups is you don't want to just go to ask questions and be taught by other students. You want to also contribute that way. You're, you'll really be able to sink in all the information that you're discussing. Um, and then the last thing I suggest doing is going back and reviewing it all on your own one more time. Um, this way you're going over the material as much as you can and you're becoming familiar with it as you can. Um, and I can say firsthand that being a tutor has really helped me better understand the material because it forces me to discuss and articulate certain concepts in a way that's easier to understand. So to recap the methods that uh, were just gone over, some methods that I used when I took this course that helped me do well were number one, going to lecture, taking good notes, using the textbook, using study groups, and also trying to start studying at least a week in advance. And something else that I haven't mentioned that helped me was also going to Professor Godrick's office hours. If there's, if you go through and you're studying and you've used the textbook and there's still certain concepts that are confusing you, that those are really good things to take directly to Professor Godrick. And I know that it can be intimidating going to a professor directly, but she is there to help you. She wants you to do well. And they've definitely helped me when I've gone. And if you want, you can always go with a friend or a classmate um, instead if you don't want to go on your own. Um, and I know one more thing to add is that all the methods that were gone over take a lot of time and time management, but um, there's things that have really helped me do well and really made a difference for me. And there are also habits that I've taken from this course and used in other courses that have also helped me do well in those courses. So hopefully you can try the advice that was given 
and it'll make a difference for you, and good luck.